is brought to you by Head Start Basketball. At that point, I said, man, if, if I'm going to keep videotaping, I've got to have my own platform. And so uh, we started to build our own platform back in 2017. And so we realized the importance of basketball. We made sure that our basketball platform was better than our competitor and at a much better price. Todd DeNoyer is the founder and president of Quick Cut Video and Analytics. Over 25 years, Todd began taping football games when he was hired as an assistant for a high school football program. After seven years of coaching and officiating both football and basketball, he began to see the need for professional video for both high school and youth teams. That insight eventually led to the development of Quick Cut Video and Analytics. Quick Cut is an affordable video analysis platform designed to elevate game performance and allow coaches to store, share, and analyze their game film. Learn about all the ways Quick Cut can help you and your team as you listen to this episode with Todd DeNoyer, founder of Quick Cut Video and Analytics. Hey, hoop heads. I wanted to take a minute to shout out our partners and friends at Dr. Dish Basketball. Their Dr. Dish shooting machines are undoubtedly the most advanced and user-friendly machines on the market. Sign up now for their virtual camp 2.0 featuring 10 days of workouts with pro trainers from the Dr. Dish family. Learn more at drdishbasketball.com and follow their incredible content at Dr. Dish B-Ball on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Mention the Hoopheads podcast and save an extra $300 on the Dr. Dish Rebel, All-Star, and CT models. Visit drdishbasketball.com for details. That's a great deal, Hoopheads. Get your Dr. Dish shooting machine today. Hi, this is Brent Tipton from the Porsche Basketball Academy in Germany, and you're listening to the Hoopheads podcast. Prepare like the pros with the all-new Fast Draw and Fast Scout. Fast Draw has been the number one play diagramming software for coaches for years. You'll quickly see why Fast Model Sports has the most compelling and intuitive basketball software out there. For a limited time, Fast Model is offering Hoopheads listeners 15% off Fast Draw and Fast Scout. Just use the code HHP15 at checkout to grab your discount, and you'll be on your way to more efficient game prep and improved communication with your team. Fast Model also has new coaching content every week on its blog, plus play and drill diagrams on its play bank. Check out the links in the show notes for more. Fast Model Sports is the best in basketball. If you're looking to improve your coaching, please consider joining the Hoopheads Mentorship Program. We believe that having a mentor is the best way to maximize your potential and become a transformational coach. By matching you up with one of our experienced mentors, you'll develop a one-on-one relationship that will help your coaching, your team, your program, and your mindset. The Hoopheads Mentorship Program delivers mentoring services to basketball coaches at all levels through our team of experienced head coaches. Find out more at hoopheadspod.com or shoot me an email directly, mike at hoopheadspod.com. Follow us on social media at hoopheadspod on Twitter and Instagram, and be sure to check out the Hoopheads Podcast Network for more great basketball content. Are you tired of overpaying for your video and analytics platform? Well, it's time to check out QuickCut.com, a platform built by coaches for coaches. QuickCut is undeniably more affordable. It's all cloud-based and comes packed with features to help high schools and youth programs store, share, and analyze game film. Make the switch, get double the storage, and save your program up to 50% on the fastest growing video editing system in the country. For more information or to request a free trial, visit quickcut.com slash basketball. That's Q-W-I-K-C-U-T dot com. Learn about all the ways Quick Cut can help you and your team as you listen to this episode with Todd DeNoyer, founder of Quick Cut Video and Analytics. Hello and welcome to the Hoopheads Podcast. It's Mike Cleansing here with my co-host Jason Sunkel tonight. And we are pleased to welcome to the podcast tonight the founder of Quick Cut Video Analysis, Todd DeNoyer. Todd, welcome to the Hoopheads Pod. We are excited to be able to have you on. Want to be able to share with our audience of coaches the tremendous services that you guys have available at Quick Cut. And we're going to start out the podcast tonight by just giving you an opportunity to share with coaches 
what makes Quick Cut so unique, why you feel like it's an excellent value proposition for the basketball coaches that are out there in our audience. And then we're going to dive into a little bit of the backstory of how you came to get it started and the sort of the genesis of the business. But let's start by giving people an idea of what Quick Cut's all about. Sounds good. Well, we are a video and analytics platform and available anywhere in the world, anybody who can connect to the internet. We have all of the same features as the our competitors. And uh, the biggest difference that we bring to the table is uh, we're about half the price and in some cases, 70% of the price. So not only do we match all of the features, but we also have features that they don't have. You will never have to delete video with us. We have an archive feature that if there's past seasons that you're not watching um, that you want to archive, those seasons don't cost against your storage, and you can always unarchive them to get access them to them at a later date. Uh, we also have the ability with our mobile app to stream games or to upload live. And uh, we've also built in a photo library so that we can have the athletes have all of their media in one spot from, you know, all their video clips, all their highlights, all their photos, and any video that was taken with a cell phone, whether it's practice or whether it's the, the, the bus ride over to the big game or the, the team dinner, all that stuff can be captured, kept on the platform. Um, any college coach can access players' highlights. And, and so we have everything that our competitors have, but at half the price. Where can people go to find out more about the service? And then we'll, and then we'll dive into a little bit of your backstory. Okay. Um, quickcut.com. And uh, make sure you spell that correctly. It's Q-W-I-K-C-U-T. Or you can give us a call in the office. We've got uh, a bunch of people working around the clock here. 407-768-2011. We also offer a complete uh, stat breakdown service for all sports. And so uh, if you're used to having uh, um, Huddle break down your film for you, we also do that as well at a cheaper price. All right. So let's go back in time to talk a little bit about your athletic background. I know you've been a coach. I know you've been an official. Just tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up and how sports became such an important part of what you do now. My dad was a parochial school teacher. We had keys to the gymnasium and we lived literally 25 feet from uh, the school. And, and so uh, we were in the gym constantly. I'm, I'm the oldest of four boys. All four of us played football, basketball, and uh, either tennis or baseball in the springtime. Um, so sports was always something that was a part of our lives. Had the privilege of going to a private school, and uh, we won state in football and basketball my senior year. Um, my brother um, won state his senior year, and my youngest brother also won state his senior year, football and uh, basketball. So I, I uh, went to college. The case was full. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I went to a small college where um, my first priority was being able to play sports, uh, not so much the education, but I wanted to be able to play football and basketball for another four years and uh, went to school to be a pastor and uh, was sent to Florida. And they happened to have a high school that opened up right across the street from the church. I went over there immediately, asked if I could coach and um, offered to do stats or whatever. I didn't care if I got paid, but I just wanted to be around uh, football and basketball. Was hired as a basketball coach that first year and then hired as a football coach. And I did that for seven years along with coaching youth football, youth basketball, youth baseball uh, as my kids grew up. Do you have a favorite in terms of wanting to coach or maybe an age level, thinking about coaching your own kids? Was there a particular sport that you liked better than the others from a coaching perspective? And then was there an age group that you liked better than another? I would probably say basketball was my sport for coaching. Um, I just was able to see everything on the floor and comment and help kids get better. Um, football was a little more challenging. I, I probably enjoyed playing football more, but from a coaching perspective, there was just so much more. Um, and I, I I was on the offensive side of the ball for, for uh, football, but uh, uh, basketball, um, I, I really enjoyed that. And while I was coaching, I was also officiating. So, All right. 
officiating, that is the job that every time I'm at a game and I think about what those officials have to go through, I'm always amazed that there are guys and gals out there that want to put on that striped shirt and want to put a whistle around their neck and go out there and officiate. And I know that you talk to a lot of officials, they give the same answer that a lot of coaches give is that the sport was so important to me. It was such a big part of my life that this is a way for me to stay involved in the game and it's a way for me to give back and it's a way for me to be involved in it. What's your perspective on why you decided to become an official and then what were some of your experiences like as an official while you were doing that? I would agree 100% being around the game and knowing that you're going to make a difference um, not in a bad way, hopefully, uh, but in a good way <laughs> that you're, you know, making the correct calls and, and, uh, helping the kids along. Um, I like teaching the younger kids and, uh, being able to help them and talk to them on the floor. Uh, the older kids don't want to hear what you have to say. You're out there just to officiate, but the, the younger kids, you can take the time out and explain why you called traveling or a double dribble or, or an illegal screen or something of that nature. That's so true. I think when you, Watch a good official when they're refing a youth basketball game. They do take the time when they make a call and they'll walk over, maybe put their hand on a kid's shoulder and just say, hey, here's what I saw. Here's maybe what you could do differently. I think in a lot of well-run youth leagues, you oftentimes have the referee and the coaches sort of working together to make sure that the kids are not only playing the game, but also learning the game, which we know at a young age is super important. It sounds like that was the kind of kind of official that you were, which I think at the youth level, we need more of those kinds of officials that are willing to take the time to be able to not only referee the game, but also to be able to teach the game. And with your background, both in coaching and officiating, obviously those two things dovetail nicely and you were able to help the kids that you were out there on the floor with. When you think about your time as a coach, what was your favorite part of – and you could take this with any sport or maybe we just want to zero in on basketball here. But what was your favorite thing about coaching? Did you like the, the strategy? Did you like the relationships with players? Did you like the X's and O's? What part of it really was something that spoke to you? I think it was bonding with the kids and then watching them grow, you know, from, you know, having that that visual of – the first day of tryouts and, and seeing what they could or couldn't do and then watching them come together as a team and, and knowing that you're a role model for them. I mean, it, it's been 20 years since I've coached and I still run in the community. I, I got kids that come up, hey, coach, how you doing? And, and uh, that is just an incredible feeling knowing that you made a difference in their life, not just on the court, uh, but off the court, that they could come to you uh, into your classroom and, and, and talk to you about challenges that they were having in their lives. Um, that, that was probably the most meaningful part, but, uh, I ain't gonna lie. I like to win. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would agree. And I think that's one of the things that when we talk to coaches here and we spend a lot of time talking about developing the right culture and using the sport of basketball to be able to have a greater impact than just on a kid's ability to shoot a jump shot or be able to execute a particular defense or offense or whatever it might be. And we're talking about coaches from the grassroots AAU level all the way up through college and professional coaches. And they all talk about similar things in terms of I'm doing and I'm teaching more than the game. But ultimately, as you said, coaches like to win. And I think that's where you start to have this connection between the two where you have somebody who, yes, you, you start to see that there there's a connection between building good relationships with players and then being able to get the most out of them. And I think that's one of the ways that coaching has shifted over the last 25 or 30 years. When you think about maybe coaches that you grew up playing under, a lot of times it was just you do it because you do it. And that relationship piece that you mentioned being important to you wasn't always looked at the same way in the past. And I think it's interesting just the way the coaching profession has changed and has sort of to – has evolved so that you have that relationship piece being a much bigger part of it. And I think a lot of coaches just like yourself would say 
that those relationships that you're able to build with players are really important and are things that drive them as a coach. And I also feel like a lot of these things that we do as coaches that improve the lives of our players and help us to build relationships with them also helps us to win games. It's a better way to connect and reach our athletes. And ultimately, as coaches, look, it's a lot more fun to go home after a game (laughs) that you've won as opposed to a game that you've lost. And I don't care what the level is. You can be coaching a third grade team or you can be coaching an NBA team. When you lose as a coach, you replay that in your mind over and over and over and try to figure out what could I do differently. And obviously now with film, and this is where Quick Cut comes into it, film allows you to be able to go back and process and see and look at, hey, what is it that we're doing? When you think about video the way it used to be when I was playing and it was VHS and the coach sitting there with the remote control and trying to rewind and going two minutes past the clip that they wanted to see. And then you end up watching the same thing like 14 times. And by the time you get to it, you're like, oh, I can't even imagine. So tell us a little bit about how the idea for Quick Cut comes into your mind. Obviously, you have a background for those people who maybe don't know your entire story. Maybe tell us a little bit about your previous business around video and then add how that kind of led to the marriage of video with your passion, back, background and passion for sports. Well, when I got hired as a football coach, they told me, because you're coaching freshmen, you're going to be our video guy on Friday nights. And that was back in the VHS days, the big old cameras resting on your <laughs> shoulders, no tripods. And I was kind of like, well, whatever. I don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll learn how to film. And I, I like technology. Um, and so I started filming games. The next year, I had some of the uh, varsity assistants said to me, hey, why don't you start filming our Pop Warner games on Saturdays? Started doing that, and that that led to doing six different fields every Saturday. And I was sending my kids out when they were beyond uh, playing Pop Warner. And uh, to, to today, we you know this last football season, we were covering almost eighty fields uh, on a Saturday. It was about seven hundred teams, and, and so I I always like videotaping. Um, Friday night, if if it's going out to eat or, or, uh, going to a movie, I'd much rather go film a football game. And, uh, so I, I just love being around basketball, football. And, and so we started filming all of these sports from rugby to, uh, uh, lacrosse to soccer and, and you name it, we cover it all now. And it was probably about four or five years ago. Um, I made everybody, it was a mandate. If I was going to shoot your sport, your game, they had to have a huddle account. I wasn't going to chase around DVDs like I had done in the past or chase around VHS tapes. And so when, when Huddle came out, I was like, man, this is awesome. And uh, they, they moved their pricing from $99 to $400 in a year, a year's time. And none of the club teams I was shooting for were going to pay the, the, the $400. And, and I just assumed they wanted to get out of the youth market. And, and it was, you know, I, at that point, I said, man, if, if I'm going to keep videotaping, I've got to have my own platform. And so uh, we started to build our own platform uh, back in 2017. And we started with football. And we knew that if we were ever going to get into the high school uh, uh, football scene, we also are going to have to have basketball, soccer, lacrosse, tennis, hockey, uh, field hockey. And so we started building out all those platforms. Um we realize that basketball's bigger than football when it comes to the amount of teams at the high school level because you got boys and girls and then you've got a whole bunch of high schools that don't have football and so we realized the importance of basketball we made sure that our basketball platform was better than our competitor and uh at a, a much better price okay so question for you you're videotaping and you're dealing with video, but it's a long way, or at least it seems like a long way for me, someone who maybe doesn't completely understand the technology of what you're doing and how you're doing it. It seems like it's a long step from I'm dealing with the video on someone else's platform and I can do all the things that I can do with that platform versus now I'm going to build the platform. So, how much of that knowledge did you have? How much of it did you have to hire out or consult. Just tell us a little bit about the process for going from the idea of 
we have to build a competing platform to, hey, we're actually building that competing platform. It just so happened that my son was attending UCF and his roommate was in the computer science program. And so I'm hanging out with those guys um, and because they were shooting video for me. He, he had a bunch of his buddies shooting video for me and uh, his roommate started building some apps for me. And so I knew that I had an avenue to go to. Um, I found out that UCF has to, their seniors have to do an exit project. Uh, so a senior exit project. So I went and pitched the idea of building a platform and uh, being able to connect it to our QuickBox. So we had built our QuickBox before we built our platform. And our QuickBox was, I recognized a major problem. Friday nights after the football games were over, everybody would bring their SD cards over to my house and I would be up all night uploading video. And then on Saturday, all the youth football games, I'd be uploading all night on Saturday night. And the internet wasn't fast enough. So I had this another senior exit project. They built me a box where I could upload live at the field. So that got built. And then the next step was, well, we need to have a platform now so we know where to load it to or upload it to. And uh, so pitched my project to the seniors. I had four seniors come up to me and say, hey, we're interested. And then we got started in uh, February of 2017. And I had one of those four students was just an absolute um, genius when it comes to computer programming. And I did everything I could to keep him after he graduated, but he was just uh, hell bent on going out to, uh, <laughs> out to California um, and, and uh, working out there. So I, cu I couldn't keep him around and, and I was able to hire uh, my son's roommate full time. And he's still to this day, my lead uh, uh, technician and just is, is just, I don't know if you've been around programmers, but, uh, you know, programmers can be a different breed. Uh, they're up all night and they just sit in front of a computer and hard to sometimes have a conversation. Well, my lead guy is just a sports nut and as normal as can be and just works at an extremely fast pace. And so in a, in a little over three years, we've got every platform stats built out. It's just, it's amazing. What was the biggest challenge? As you went through the process, what was a hurdle or two maybe that you ran into, something that took you either longer to figure out how to do it or maybe it was just a piece that, boy, we really want to have this, but we can't quite figure it out. What was the biggest challenge? Well, I was teaching full time to pay the bills. My wife's a nurse, so she's working full time to pay the bills and every dime we made on our video business was paying our developers and we did that busted our hump for probably four years, didn't take a dime. And the biggest challenge was listening to my wife or trying to convince her, <laughs> trying to convince her, hey, this is going to pay off someday. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that conversation. I've, I've had I've had similar conversations. Yeah. When you're up many. all night, Friday night and Saturday night for, for 10, 12 weeks uh, of a football season and, and not collecting a dime, that's tough. Absolutely. And there's no question about that. And when you're trying to start something new and you have this vision that you believe in, but it's hard to see those results, you're not seeing necessarily the tangible results showing up in the bank account. That can be for sure a difficult conversation. So as you got this thing built and you start looking at the kinds of features and the things that you want it to do, what are some things that you tried to build into it that are unique, different, easier to use, things that you feel like right now are features that any coach who goes on there is going to be like, wow, this really works well for what I'm trying to do. Are there any features that stand out to you? I would just say the whole user interface is a lot easier than what they're used to. Similar in a lot of cases and, and easier. I had uh, the ability to go to, into different high schools and show them how to use Huddle and get the full, uh, you know, the, the full extent of their features utilized by coaching staffs because a lot of them were just watching the video. They weren't doing anything but watching video. And, and I try to 
show them there's so much more that you can do from telestrations, annotations to playlists to uh, just a lot of different things. And so I knew Huddle so well, it made it a whole lot easier to communicate to my developers. This is the way I want it. I want it different in some cases, and in other cases, I want it very similar. Yeah, I could see where the familiarity with something that is already in existence gave you the ability to go to your people and say, hey, this is what this needs to look like. This is what it needs to function like. And here's a couple areas that we can tweak and really improve and get better on. I think one of the things that this will speak to my naivety as through this uh, through this process, I remember when I first started hearing about Huddle and Crossover. And at that point, my last year coaching, I think was... 2009 when I was coaching at the high school level. So we were just sort of in the DVD era with with video. And I, so I never had coached at the high school level with huddle or crossover or any of that. So I remember when I first started hearing about these services and I was like, man, these algorithms, these algorithms are awesome that they can just go in and how do they track every single player and get all their stats like that? That's just amazing that these computer programmers can get all this stuff put together and little did I realize that it was human beings statting this stuff. And I had no idea. Like, honestly, when I first heard that, I was like, man, that's, you got to have a lot of people. I thought it was just the computer algorithms that were figuring all this out. So just talk a little bit about that process of onboarding human resources to be able to do all the stats, what kind of training that takes. And just just tell us a little bit about that process sort of in the background that maybe a lot of coaches take for granted. Yeah. Um, it, it just so ha- – COVID was probably the best thing that could have happened to Quick Cut. Um, I had coaches sitting at home bored, willing to jump on a Zoom and just watch what we were building. And it wasn't fully built at that time, that first summer. But we are on lockdown and people were bored. I was running seven to ten Zooms a day, seven days a week, um, all summer long. Um, and it was, it was great. I mean, I, I, it was exciting. Um, but then things just started falling into place. And I, I, I always tell people, man, it, I can only, uh, uh, credit God with this being built. It, it's not my business acumen. I'll, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> and, and it's, uh, just having the right people cross my path at the right time. So we had a, a, a gentleman that was, uh, switched over to quick cut the first year and just so happened to have a son that's a professor overseas uh 13 hour difference and uh at a university where he has enough time to head up our stat platform and and so he heads up our stats hired people from the philippines from india from south korea and so it it just worked out great he took it took the bull by the horns drew up all the training and 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 the hiring process and uh, I think we've got close to 200 basketball teams this year that are using stats um, and so that's a lot of games uh, every week um, for us to stat and uh, one of the things that I really wanted to make sure is that we were as accurate as possible and I kept hearing people bark and complain about. Uh, our competitor, uh, the stats not being accurate, whether it, w- it didn't really matter what sport it was, they weren't accurate. And, and so we built in some safety measures and, and, uh, they, they don't, you know, sometimes they'll fail on us. It, it's because you're dealing with humans. <laughs> right. Um, but that's one thing that, uh, we've heard back from our customers is that the, the accuracy is phenomenal. Okay. Two questions. One, how long does it take to train someone who's not familiar with that particular sport, whether it's football or basketball, how many hours of training does it take to get them to be up to speed where they can do the type of quality job that you're looking for on a stat? And then number two, once they have that training and let's say they have a 32-minute high school basketball game, how long does it take them to stat that entire game? Well, we we are um, on the cusp of doing something really different when it comes to stats. Um, We've already introduced it for football. We offer an advanced breakdown and a basic breakdown. So it's a little more complicated to answer your question unless you understand that we have two different levels of stats. So for football, um, 
our competitor will have, I think it's like 14 columns of data, which we offer as our basic package. We also offer a an advanced package, which is over 40 columns of data. So for football, we will stat your um, your, your team stats, but we'll also do all of your individual stats. So how many yards after the catch, how many carries, who made the tackle, who got the sack, who, you know, how many people got on a, in on that sack? Well, we're doing the same thing for basketball this year. And so we're beta testing it with, I think, six schools. We're doing an advanced uh, list of stats that um, we're, we're experimenting with our statisticians to make sure that they can register. Did your the, did the guy that you're defending score on you? Okay, that's going to be a stat. How many times did you get scored on? That gets a little subjective. And, and so uh, uh, we've got, you know, a, a bunch of things like that that are, are, are in the works this year. I, I would say an average game, high school boys basketball um, is going to be uh, statted in a quicker amount of time than a girls basketball. Girls have more stats than, than the boys do um, typically. Um, so it takes probably an hour and a half to do a basketball game. So when a coach uploads that video, game ends, video is uploaded right from the site, gets to you, how so how quick is that turnaround? When does when the coach get those statistics back? Yeah, for all of our sports, we offer a 12-hour turnaround time and we offer a 24-hour turnaround time. But okay. truthfully, if you pay for the 24, you're getting it in about 12. Gotcha. Makes Makes total sense. Do you see, as you're looking at all these statistics from a basketball standpoint, are there have you have you dove into the impact that certain statistics have on winning and losing games? Is that something that you guys are looking at? Yeah, yeah. As as we continue to advance our stats, um, it's you know we've got formulas for uh, that take a lot of different stats into perspective. So that a coach can really get a, can zero in on any point of the, any part of the game, can, can zero in on any athlete. Um, one of the things that we do differently is, is we don't round up or round down for players minutes. We try to be exact. And, and that gives you, uh, rates per minute exact, you know, so you can say well, this guy has been averaging three rebounds every minute or, or, uh, 1.3 rebounds per minute. Now, if I'm looking at my eighth man and I'm looking at my one of my starters, I can start looking at those rates per minute and I can get a pretty good idea who, who's contributing and who's not, who needs more playing time and who doesn't. I can also look at stats based on who's on the court, who's who, which five are the most productive. That that is extremely helpful because you know the best athlete may not be contributing to the team the most, and and so being able to look at the stats with with an eye of uh, I want to win, um, what's going to give me my best winning percentage? Which which rotation? Uh, which players? And and that's what stats are going to help you with. Yeah, that's really I think valuable data when you start looking at the on off numbers and the different lineups and obviously that's something that's come to the NBA first and then trickled down to college basketball and eventually now into high school basketball but it's really interesting when you go and you start watching a game and you look at okay this player's on the floor and the team starts to play well and always seems to play well when this particular player's on the floor and then you have other players who maybe seemingly are more talented or more gifted and yet when they're on the floor, the team just doesn't perform in the same way. And I think if you go back again, 15 or 20 years ago, there were a lot of coaches that maybe intuitively thought that or thought that they saw that, but there was no real empir empirical way to be able to, to prove it. And now the fact that you can actually have some numbers and you can put that data out there that look, when this five is on the floor, we're whatever, we're plus 25 points over the course of the last three games. And that makes a difference when you start trying to make a decision about who's going to play, who's not going to play, who should be getting more minutes, who should be getting less. It's just interesting and amazing to me that all this stuff can be available to you in such a short period of time, especially, again, for myself growing up in that VHS era 
and thinking about what it was like to try to even watch a game and learn anything from the film. It was such a tedious process that you look at what it is now. I know we've had, Todd, it's funny, we've had coaches on here who are, you know, my age, whatever, I'm 51 now, and they talk about the early parts of their career where, you know, they had to do the film exchange and they'd get the VHS tape and you'd have to go and drop it at the FedEx or you'd go and you'd drive somewhere to meet somebody and exchange films and then you'd get the film and it wouldn't work. You know, the the cassette would be all messed up or the tape inside the inside the video cassette itself wouldn't work or you just I mean it was a nightmare. And now what we're able to do and what you guys are able to do with this and to be able to provide this kind of service for coaches, it just makes things so much more efficient. Now we've talked to a lot of coaches and I'm sure you find this too is that because it's so much easier to watch film, I think coaches probably watch a lot more film. Now not in terms of the amount of time they spend but just maybe when they're scouting an opponent, they watch four games of tape. Rather, you know, in the past they might only watch one, and so just that ability to be able to do that to me is just tremendously valuable, and it makes it easy. My son is playing in high school this year, and for the first time, his games are all being videoed, and for him to be able to watch those games, or for me to be able to sit and watch those games with him and point things out, whereas before you could only talk anecdotally, like, "Oh, you remember this play," and Maybe I maybe I remember it one way from the stands and he remembers it another way during the game and then you're trying to figure all that out and now you can just sit and you can watch the video and it makes things way, way more efficient. I just think that that service to me is just – it goes without saying how valuable that is in terms of seeing those trends and being able to see what you do out on the court. When you talk to coaches, what are what's some of the feedback that you hear from coaches – because a lot of people, obviously, since you're new and you're a competitor, that I'm assuming that a lot of the coaches that we have on Quick Cut have switched over from Huddle. So what do you hear from them in terms of what they like about the service? Beyond, obviously, the price point is tremendously better. But just in terms of the service itself, what are you hearing from the coaches that are using the platform? Well, the nice thing with our service, when you call, you're going to get somebody on the phone immediately during a during business hours, and that's usually from 8 to 8, you're going to get somebody on the phone when you call. That doesn't happen with our competitor. Um, our, our user interface is a lot more user-friendly, and, and uh, we hear that from coaches all the time. Probably the biggest hesitation for coaches to even look at us is Huddle um, allows – there's so many people using Huddle that exchanging game film is, is super easy, especially w- with football. Um But even with basketball, too, um, we've made it extremely easy to exchange with Huddle users or whatever platform they're using, Um, whether it's Google Drive or whatever, you know, Dropbox, any of that can get uploaded to our platform in seconds. And, and so we've made it really easy. You guys probably are aware. I'm 54. Um, (laughs) I talk to coaches all the time that just aren't tech savvy. And so, uh, you know, they, you'll ask them what browser they're using and they have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and so they're a bit challenged. The younger coaches, they get it. And they're like, man, why aren't more people switching? All right. So just for, just for those coaches who are tech averse, give us an example of, let's say that I'm on quick cut and I need to get film of a couple of my upcoming opponents and those upcoming opponents have their film on huddle. What does that process look like for the coaches on Quick Cut to be able to access their opponent's film on Huddle? Or just tell us a little bit more, go into a little bit more detail on that process. Okay, so you would send a request to them. Hey, I'm looking for this game and this game on these dates against these guys. Can you please send these to me? And in that exchange that's sent to them, there's also instructions on how to download a game. Now, basketball is easy. It's one clip. The entire game is in one clip. So they hit the download button. They get an email with that download link. They forward that email to me. I can do a right click on that link, copy the video URL, and I just paste that video URL in in Quick Cut. Our system will automatically download it and upload it behind the scenes. So if you can copy and paste, you can move film from any platform into our platform. 
and it takes about 60 seconds on the back end for it to download and upload. It's that simple. So you can do a one-way exchange. So if I want to send film to a Huddle user, I simply download, I get a link to my email, and I forward that email on to them. If they're already using Quick Cut, I can send it to them right through the platform. Boom, boom, boom. It's two, I think it's three clicks with the mouse. Yeah, it doesn't get much easier than that. That's super, super easy. And I think, as you said, it is interesting to talk to coaches and you have some who are tech averse and they end up hiring a young coach on their staff and just, uh, you know, spoon feed, yeah, spoon, spoon feed me this stuff. Just like you were, just like you were the video guy back in the day, right? You were the you were you were the young guy who was interested in it, and was willing to fiddle around with the camera and figure it all out. And somebody else just said, "Just show me that finished product." There, there is there is a lot of coaches that are out there. Although I think, again, as the years go on here, those coaches are becoming less and less, and more and more people are obviously becoming more comfortable, at least with the basics of interacting with technology. And of course, we know that players are very tech savvy and they want to be able to see their film, whether it's on an iPad, whether it's on their phone, they want to be able to have instant access to it, just like they have instant access to everything else in their world. So from a player perspective, how does Quick Cut work well for the players on the team? We've talked a little bit about it from the coach's perspective. From a player perspective, just give us an idea of what that looks like. It's identical to what they're used to. They can build highlights. Um, they, they can send off their highlights. They can send off games. Um, there's a place for the coach to gather all of their recruiting information from their parents' names, their, their Twitter feed, their Instagram feed. They can have all the coaches can gather all of that information and send that off to any coach that they have contact with. And so it, it, there's nothing different between us and our competitor. Do you have, I'm just curious, do you have college coaches coming to you yet at this point looking for film of certain players or teams that they might be interested in recruiting or recruiting from? Yeah, it's it, it, basketball is really different in comparison to other sports when it comes to recruiting um, where the, the, the club basketball – uh, AAU basketball, playing in tournaments, the coaches can go to a, a high-level tournament and see every athlete that they'd ever think about recruiting at that tournament. And so they can, you know, watch them. They're, they're already on their radar. And so they can watch them in person over the summer when, when we don't have these COVID restrictions or the NCAA restrictions. So that, that's different. Um, whereas like football, they want film. They need film. They're going to want to look at, uh, you know, they're going to use a film service in uh, in addition to using the film from Quick Cut or from Huddle. Have, have you had any luck breaking in with AAU organizations to, to film their games or tournament organizers? Is that an avenue that either you've started to explore or maybe something that you'd explore in the future? Um, Baller TV, I don't know if you're familiar with them. I am, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so they've kind of uh, cornered the market uh, yep. uh, on a lot of the big AAU tournaments. And, I, I you know, I, I don't necessarily want to get into that uh, or, or as far as a company. I, I don't want to offer that those services. Um, Understood. So, you know, there, there's – every national youth tournament has their 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 championships in Florida. Basketball, volleyball, football, karate, baseball, soccer. They're, they're all in Central Florida. Everybody wants to come to Disney. And so, <laughs> you know, right in my backyard, I've got all of these national youth championships um, every year. And so, we've got plenty of work right here for us as a video company. Yeah, absolutely. I can only imagine that you have plenty of things that you can be doing without doing that. When you look forward into the future – what are some things that maybe you're working on that you want to share that you can share? What do you see coming down the road in terms of maybe things analytically that you'd like to do? Just what's on the horizon? What are you looking to do next to continue to improve what you're already doing? Well, we, we will um, be offering AI cameras um, like the Pixelot camera or the Huddle Focus camera. That, that's in the works and, and that will be uh, available in the near future. Um, so that, that that's going to be a big 
a big change for a lot of our customers that we'll be able to offer something that's affordable and uh, ha- much higher revenue share than what's being available made available right now. Um, and, and I just, AI cameras are the way to go. Can I ask you a question about those cameras? So they obviously track motion or track the ball, but how do they, I'm amazed at how well they're able to do that, especially when there's other activity, like you think at a basketball game and there's things going on, like in the front row of the bleachers and different people walking around. So just how does that work? Look, I know you can't explain it and break down in code, but just give me a general sense of how that AI system works. You upload video of a basketball game and you draw on the video where you want the camera to go. So you show it what to track and you continue to upload video after video after video and you track every one of those clips and you're essentially teaching the computer this is what you do when you're live. This is how you track at a basketball game. And it will never be perfect because it'll always grab something that you didn't want it to grab, especially if there's a real quick fast break and and the balls flip down the court quickly. The the AI camera can't catch that. Um, But you've got more than one camera on the court. And so the other camera would have gotten that. And so you've got two layers of video from each camera and it'll have everything. Um, So... It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I, I wish it was able to track stats, but, uh, I don't see that happening anytime soon. It really is an amazing technology. It's something that I just, I sit and I go into gyms where they have those cameras and then you see the results and the footage. And I, I always think back to whether it was the manager of the high school team or my dad sitting there with the camera or your, or yourself with the camera on your shoulder and all of a sudden that person's cheering or they're making off color comments or whatever as they're, as they're doing the film. And suddenly that suddenly there's 30 seconds of, Hey, the action's down at the other end of the floor. And you know, it's, it's really cool. And even I think one of the things that I know now I think we take it for granted, but just the fact that the scoreboard is sitting in the corner of the video. And so you always know the time and score, which going back again, 15 or 20 years, you could be in a situation where your camera person may have never even, right, may have never even shot the scoreboard once. And so you have no idea, well, how much time is left when we did this? You you have no idea. And so all those little innovations to me are just really, really cool. And I think it's something that Anybody out there, and I think COVID probably accelerated that because of the amount of live streaming and just the fact that people couldn't have access. And it's interesting. So my my parents are uh, they live in Florida now, and I'm here in Cleveland, Ohio. And my dad now can hop on the internet. And he can watch my son play in a JV basketball game. I just text him a link, and boom, he's up there and he's watching it. And I mean, again, ten years ago if you'd have told me that that was going to be possible and especially not having a human being involved in the process, I would have told you you were, I would have told you you were crazy. And so that's really a cool thing that once you guys have that, I'm sure that'll, that'll really bump your ability to expand as opposed to having, again, a human running that camera. I could write a book on stories of people talking. (laughs) That would be a, that would be a great Twitter account. I, I, I had one of my students, um, shooting a football game, talking about where he was going to get the cheapest ecstasy. Nice. There you go. That's always a, that's always a good move. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's always a good move. I, I always love the, the, like the, the team manager who is criticizing every substitution <laughs> and play call by the coach and then occasionally peppering that with off-color language. Those were always my favorite. And then you'd be sitting there watching the film with your team and the, the the poor kid sitting in the back and just, oh, I, I, I went through way too many of the way too many of those experiences where you feel bad. You're like, hey, don't you know that there's audio on this thing too? Oh man, you we want to keep that quiet. Yeah, we had a teacher one time that was at a wrestling match and and using some off color language and and a friend of mine, another teacher, got some stationery off the principal's desk and wrote him a note. Come, please see me on Monday. 
<laughs> all weekend he thought he was getting fired <laughs> oh that's uh that, that is not that is not good yeah you gotta you definitely have to you definitely have to watch that when i was just on a i was just on a zoom at my school and you know they're inviting people in on the zoom and then one of the guys that was on the zoom jumped on and he said something like what what is this that we're having to do but he peppered it with a few <laughs> Choice adjectives. And basically, the entire school district was on this was was on, was on this call, so it didn't go over didn't go over well. When the superintendent had to come on at the end of the Zoom, and apologize to the presenter and say, "I apologize for the unprofessional nature of my staff. I'll definitely be having a conversation with that individual after time is up." So yeah, there's a lot of things when you have human involvement that make it a little little bit dicey so yeah i'm sure those ai cameras uh, I, you'll be very excited once you can once you can get those up and, and running and that'll make it again just that much easier for coaches because let's face it that's what all of us are looking for is that ease of use that having to kind of take it out of the human being's hands and just automate it as much as possible so that you can gather all the information and be able to look at the film and do all the things that you want to be able to do so is there anything else that we missed uh, that that you want to share with us before we give you another chance to share with people how they can find out more about the platform and how we can get, connect, get them connected to it? I, th I think we covered everything. You know, we're just really excited about the growth we've had over this last year and uh, the continued uh, uh, response we're getting all over the United States. In fact, we're actually all over the world now. Um, Europe and, and, and Germany, Switzerland, Brazil, Mexico. So we're, we're excited about where we're at and we're going to just keep pushing forward and offering a better solution at a much, much better rate. That's good. That's good stuff. And coaches out there that are part of our audience, if you hadn't had a chance to check out Quick Cut, please make sure you do. I think you're going to find that one, it's a high, high quality platform. And two, as Todd has mentioned here a bunch of times, the price point is going to save you some money. And that's obviously something that with school budgets and athletic budgets being what they are, that's certainly a factor that we all want to take into consideration. So, Todd, before we wrap things up, once again, share how people can reach out to you, how they can find out more about Quick Cut. What do they need to do to consider jumping on the platform with you guys? To learn more, we give a 15-day free trial. So, if you go to quickcut.com, that's Q W I K C U T. Dot com. You can sign up for a free trial. You get immediate access to one of our accounts that's already loaded up with video and it's got the stat breakdowns and everything. So you can poke around and take a look at it. And if you got more questions, you can reach out to us at 407-768-2011. And uh, there will be people standing by waiting for your phone calls. And we'll walk you through. Uh, one of the things that we do is onboarding. Any new customer, we give them an extra 20 hours for life of storage. And we just want to make sure they understand the platform so they don't have to call us in mid-season in a panic wondering what's going on. So uh, onboarding is, is one of the things that we do for all of our customers. Todd, we cannot thank you enough for jumping out with us tonight. We are honored and pleased to be able to partner up with you guys at Quick Cut to be able to provide the kind, of, the kind of service that you guys are able to give to coaches, to be able to give them an all-in-one solution so that they can – see the film that they want to see so their players can see the film that they want to see. So ultimately, as we talked off the top, to help them win more games. And when you can do that with a seamless platform, that's going to save you a bunch of money. That sounds like a winning combination to me. So Todd, again, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Those of you out there in our audience, please, get, please give Quick Cut a look. And we appreciate you listening and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Hoop Heads Podcast, presented by Head Start Basketball.